So we've been using the M4 Pro MacBook Pro every day for the last few months and even took a traveling on our recent trip to the US for CES 2025, where I answered some emails in the middle of the desert. More on that later. So here are my honest and real life thoughts on some of the new features on the M4 Pro so far. First up, the nano texture display. Now this has been a I guess a pretty controversial topic. Uh, some people love it and say that it greatly reduces glare and reflections and makes everything much easier to see. And some people on the flip side hate it, uh, claiming that it reduces contrast or just makes everything look blurry and washed out. Now for me personally, uh, I love it. I talked about it in detail and, and how it works in my M4 Pro MacBook before you buy video. And I said in that video that I'm going to get that nano texture upgrade option on all of my future MacBooks. But I also wanted to do some extensive traveling with the nano texture where I could try it in every possible environment and get a real world understanding of just how effective it is. So coffee shops, hotel rooms with huge bright windows, uh, tons of artificial lighting at the CES exhibition hall, etc. I noticed a massive improvement over the standard glossy panel I was so used to using on the previous MacBook versions. But that's boring, so let's do a more extreme test. So I drove a few hours out of Las Vegas, specifically Death Valley, which was actually the shooting location for some of the scenes at the start of Star Wars Episode 4. And just like in Star Wars, it's bright, very bright. It was the middle of the day, uh, no clouds, and I was able to sit on the hood of the car and easily read text and see images and reply to emails on the screen. Admittedly at 100% brightness, uh, and yes, the M4 Pro MacBook screen does get slightly brighter than previous models, which did come in handy. In fact, the sun was so bright that I had two ND filters over my camera lens to try and reduce the light so the camera could actually record. And yes, I am also wearing polarized sunglasses, and I can still see the screen perfectly. And this is just something that I usually cannot do with glossy screens. Now, is this a ridiculously extreme test? Not at all indicative of real life. Yes, uh, I don't really think there's gonna be many people uh, replying to emails on a laptop in the middle of the desert. Was it almost magical that I could see everything so clearly? Also, yes. Now sure, there are a lot of people who talk smack about the nano texture, saying it makes text look blurry and colors look dull. Uh, it's not true, and I really just encourage you to try it yourself physically and see how it compares to glossy. Now, if you use your Mac at a desk 95% of the time, the nano texture may not be a smart upgrade, uh, especially if you can control the light in the room. So perhaps instead, you can use that money to invest in a desktop dock which is where the sponsor for this section of the video, Anchor and their new Prime TB5 docking station comes in. The Anchor Prime TB5 docking station is one of the first in the industry to feature Thunderbolt 5 technology. Now Thunderbolt 5 is super powerful because it allows for a high transfer speed of 80 gigabits per second per Thunderbolt port with a maximum of 120 gigabits per second across multiple ports, which is enough bandwidth for multiple high resolution monitors and high speed storage devices. And equipped with the new Thunderbolt 5 technology, the Anchor Prime TB5 docking station can support high speed charging of laptops up to 140 watts. It also has 14 different ports, including a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, HDMI and DisplayPort 2.1, and even has an internal fan and temperature control for active cooling with a built-in power supply using GAN materials to eliminate bulky power adapters. And all of this power can be connected to your MacBook with just a single cable, simplifying your desk setup. If you want to learn more about this dock, go ahead and search for Anchor Prime TV5. If you want more information, I'll just add some links down in the description of this video. Okay, moving on, I had some people ask me about the battery life as well. Now, Apple officially claims the M4 Pro has the best battery at 22 hours versus 18 for the M3 Pro and also the M2 Pro. In reality though, the battery life across all of the Pro Chip MacBooks is just so good that you can't really tell the difference. At least I couldn't uh, with all of them side by side and just doing basic stuff like emails, web browsing, or Word documents. But again, uh, you learn to really appreciate this when you use your laptop as a laptop, right? Like you're away from your desk and your charger. And I remember multiple times I'd be watching a movie during a flight, 
Um, after 45 minutes to an hour, I checked the battery percentage and it's dropped like 2%. In fact, the battery life is now just so good that I've stopped taking a portable battery with me when I travel. I just make sure the MacBook Pro is charged to 100%. Uh, and if I need to charge my phone or AirPods or other devices, I literally just plug them straight into the MacBook and still have plenty of battery left over. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't realize about the M4 Pro is just how good the price to performance ratio is. And I was actually really surprised surprised at how much this has influenced my purchase decision this time around. I remember when the M1 Pro first came out in late 2021. Sure, it was a noticeable improvement on the standard M1 chip, but for a lot of people, it just wasn't quite powerful enough. So a lot of those people, including me, uh, were forced to pay hundreds of dollars more to either get more RAM uh, or more CPU or GPU cores, or even just entirely skip the Pro chip and go to the max chip, which is typically about 800 US dollars more expensive. And this was also kind of the case with the M2 Pro and also the M3 Pro. Now, I think the M4 Pro though is kind of the tipping point where a lot of these people are now like, hang on, like I don't actually need any additional performance because the base model is already so powerful. I mean, just take a look at what you're getting with the M4 Pro chip from the get-go, especially compared to the M1 and M2 Pro. Significantly more CPU cores, uh, a few more GPU cores, between six and eight gigabytes of extra RAM, depending which one you're looking at, uh, plus all of those miscellaneous upgrades like ray tracing, dynamic caching, and a massively increased memory bandwidth. And all of this is at the exact same 1999 US dollar price point as the original M1 Pro in 2021. Now, side note here, the M4 Pro often goes on sale for just $17.99 brand new, usually on Amazon. Uh, so I'll include a link below to the best pricing I could find. Now, when I was doing some testing and comparing all of the base model Pro chips against each other for a previous video on this channel, you can see how the M1, M2 and M3 are all relatively similar in performance, but in many areas, the M4 Pro greatly outperforms them. Take 3D workflows, for example. Here's a 3D program called Blender that I use occasionally. Now, if I wanted to render this demanding 3D scene, for example, my M1 Pro would take 15 and a half minutes. It's too long for me if I need to smash out, you know, three or four renders quickly to check something, for example, and so the Pro isn't really an option for me, and I'd have to spend extra and go for a max chip. The M2 and M3 Pro chips are a little bit better, but still, it's a little bit longer than what I would ideally like to be sitting around and waiting. The M4 Pro, with its extra GPU cores, extra RAM, faster memory bandwidth, and ray tracing technology, reduces this to just under three minutes, which is a time frame I'm totally okay with. It's also important to note that these results can vary depending on the workflow. When I was compiling code, for example, I did still notice a difference, but it wasn't a huge amount. Now, my main personal workflow as a YouTuber is, surprise, video editing. I know, it's really boring, but just bear with me. Now, when I was buying my current work MacBook in 2022, the M2 Pro was nowhere near powerful enough. So I had to spend a small fortune upgrading to the Max chip, as well as some additional CPU and GPU upgrades. Here are my specs if you're interested. It's essentially a fully upgraded M2 Max chip, but with only 32 gigabytes of RAM. And a lot of people test the video editing performance of Max by you know, exporting a basic 4K video or playing a few clips on the timeline. Now, I tried to go into more detail uh, and the results were pretty interesting. My editing program of choice is DaVinci Resolve and my biggest bottleneck when editing videos is not timeline playback or rendering, but things like noise removal or stabilization. Things where you literally cannot do anything else until that particular process has finished. And also some things like animation. Uh, and the M4 Pro's raw power makes a huge difference here. Now you can see overall performance on the M1, M2 and M3 Pro chips are almost identical versus the M4 Pro that clearly destroys all of them. And overall is very similar to my expensive M2 Max system, which was almost three times more expensive. GPU effects are obviously going to perform better on the beefier 38 core M2 Max GPU, but anything Fusion related sees a big improvement on, surprisingly, the M4 Pro. Now, after testing both side by side, uh, I actually realized I could replace my really expensive M2 Max 
with the base model M4 Pro and the only real drawbacks to my workflow will be slightly longer rendering time and about a 25% hit to GPU effects performance. Not bad, and if I was in the market for a new work laptop, uh, that would actually seriously impact my purchase decision. And maybe yours as well. I mean, maybe the cheapest base model pro chip MacBook is now a really viable and cost-effective choice when it wasn't before. That's really the point I'm trying to make here. But yeah, overall, I am extremely happy with the M4 Pro, specifically the base model. I think it's amazing value, especially if you can get it on a slight sale or discount. Uh, and honestly, I think it's close to perfect. There's really nothing that I would change. And I feel like Apple has kind of reached the point where there's really not much more you can do to these MacBooks rather than just slapping an ever more powerful chip in there every year or two like they have been doing. Now, if you're interested in how your particular workflow might perform on the M4 Pro, I went into way more detail in this comparison video if you wanna check it out.